Picture this. You open YouTube and there on the main page you see it. A video titled I'm sorry or addressing something vague yet oddly specific. We know exactly what this is going to be. The thumbnail shows your favorite influencer with their perfectly curated bedroom backdrop, tears dripping down their cheeks as they sit cross-legged on the floor in their designer sweatpants. We found ourselves an apology video. We're left guessing what they could have done. Was it an inappropriate comment or a brand deal with a shady company? Who knows? One thing is for sure though. Influencers have apology videos down to a science. And even though they were way more popular 2-3 years ago, I still wonder what's happening to someone's body when they tear up and press record. In this channel, we also have some things down to a science, and that's science itself. Today we're going to dive into the science behind an apology video. After all, it takes a lot for our bodies to be sad, and we imagine it takes just as much to feign sadness for the YouTube views, but I digress. Let's start with the basics. We can safely deduce one thing from apology videos. That person feels sad or at least wants <laughs> us to think that they are. But what does it even mean to be sad? Sadness is, well, a human emotion. Alongside happiness, anger, fear, surprise, and disgust, sadness makes up one of the six categories of human emotions. Sadness is something we've all probably felt at one time or another, so we know that it comes with feelings of unhappiness or low mood, a true case of the blues. Although being sad can be a bummer. The good thing about sadness is it doesn't usually last that long. And it's a totally normal reaction to have. Is it totally normal to share it with millions of strangers on the internet though? I'll get back to you on that one. Since sadness is a pretty common emotion, it has some pretty common physical signs in the body. Sadness can be characterized by specific sets of behaviors, facial expressions, and changes in physiology. Although these can look different among different people. Typical signs of sadness include feeling down or having a low mood, frowning or downturned mouth, and lowered eyes and eyelids. If you've ever seen an apology video, there's usually lots of crying alongside the other signs of sadness. But what's actually happening when someone cries? The most obvious thing that happens when someone cries is tears. Tears might seem and taste like salt water because they contain electrolytes, but they're actually made up of other things. Protein, mucus, and oil are in there too. But you'll think twice before licking up any tears in the future. We have three different types of these salty mucus and protein-filled drops. Basal tears are always present in our eyes, keeping them from turning into dried-out raisins. We also have reflex tears, which, you guessed it, are produced as a reflex reflex to protect the eye. You know how you tear up when you get something Ouch. stuck in your eye? Yes, that's reflex tears. Finally, we've got emotional tears, the ones that we see in apology videos. Emotion registers in different areas of the brain, prompting the endocrine system to release the appropriate hormones to your eyes, resulting in, surprise, tears. You may think that all three types of tears simply fall from your eyes, but it's a little more complex than that. It's true, tears do exit from the tear duct, which is right on your eyelid, but they truly originate from your lacrimal gland. While tears do fall out of your eye area, they also secretly drain on the inside too, through your nasal cavity. Yuck, right? When you combine your lacrimal gland that makes the tears, the outside tear duct that lets the tears out of your eyes, and the inside ducts that help you with drainage, voila! 
you have crying. Now, obviously, the eyes and ocular glands are important for crying, but there are six muscles we use to cry. The muscles that work together to help us cry are unsurprisingly all located in your face. They include the frontalis muscle stretching across your forehead, the corrugator supercilii muscle almost exactly underneath your eyebrows, the orbicularis oculi from around your eyebrows to underneath your eyes, the zygomaticus major diagonally from your zygomatic to your mouth, the depressor anguli oris corners of your mouth to your chin, and last but not least your mentalis muscle underneath your lips to your chin. Whew, who knew it took so many muscles just to shed a tear? Crying is a workout. Looping everything we just learned back to apology videos, we often see lots of tears in these videos. Crying can be a sign of sadness, but not always. Sometimes tears can also be reflective of empathy, surprise, or grief, but they all look the same. Maybe these apology YouTubers aren't as sad as they seem. Now that we've clarified what sadness looks like on our outsides, let's dive into what it looks like on our insides. One thing is for certain. Emotion takes place in the brain. However, the parts that interact and react when you experience emotions are different for different feelings. Here's what we know. Different regions in the brain are thought to be associated with different areas in the limbic system, the part of our brain that deals with behavior and emotion. Certain parts of the limbic system activate when different emotions are experienced. Okay, so we know that emotions activate the limbic system, but what the heck is the limbic system. The limbic system lives deep inside your brain and although scientists debate about what exactly makes up the limbic system, these four structures always make the cut. Hypothalamus maintains homeostasis, controls emotions, regulates sexual responses and hormone release. The hippocampus, which holds and retrieves memories and contributes to spatial awareness. The amygdala, which regulates emotional responses to environmental stimuli, and the limbic cortex, which affects mood, motivation, and judgment. It is made up of the cingulate gyrus and the parahippocampal gyrus. With these four structures in mind, let's see how some common emotions affect our brain. Keep in mind some structures outside of the limbic system play a big role too. The emotional response for happiness activates your limbic cortex and your precuneus. Anger and fear are quite similar, with the hypothalamus being stimulated by the amygdala, but in anger, the prefrontal cortex also jumps in. Sadness, our emotion of the hour, is thought to activate the insula, the thalamus, the amygdala, and the hippocampus. Now here's the tricky thing, especially with apology videos. Although we may portray one emotion on the outside, our brains may be acting totally different on the inside. Keep in mind that guilt is another human emotion, and while it activates the temporal lobe and subgenual region of the brain, it can definitely be confused with sadness. Just saying. Although this was an excellent excuse for a discussion on sadness, our ocular system, our muscles, and our brains will close out this video going full circle. Apology videos. We love them, we hate them. We love to hate them. But despite our mixed feelings, we definitely have their anatomy down to a science. A little crying, a little brain activity, a little muscle activity, and a lot of of drama. Thanks for sticking around to learn more about the anatomy of an apology video and click on the next video to continue learning more about the human body. Like the video if you want to see more of these on this channel and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next upload. I will see you next time.